You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. Oh, TV. TV. From the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Orphan Black after show we'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip and now another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite tv show it's after buzz tv's orphan black after show hi everybody welcome clone club this is after buzz orphan black as you can tell by the music behind me and the apparent clone dance that's Catching the studio by storm, <laughs> except for Will. Will is now even boycotting pointing this week. He has not pointed yet. I do though admit though, this dance is sweeping the nation. It, it really is. is. It's, 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 it's a craze. At you know, least the kids. studio. Yes, all around the studio, people are doing it. Except for the Northeast over there. Uh, pointing, pointing at him right now. If you're watching some video, I'm pointing at Will Link. Because now I got the point. That's Will, how you, I got, you, point. Get, you get a point then. Okay. Maybe point. next week for the last episode I'll dance. Will Smith, who, who has a lot of points, is pointing. And next to Will Smith. Will, Will Smith? You call Will me Link. Will Smith. I'm going to call you Will Smith. <laughs> successful Will Smith. African-American Off actor. It's, it's foreshadowing. It's, it's foreshadowing right now. I'm just <laughs> telling you. I'm expecting big things from you, Will. <laughs> for those of you who didn't see the episode, Will Smith. <laughs> Will Smith, appear. everybody, yes. Yeah. And Anna Koppel. I got her name right. Hey. Hey, you're welcome. And right next to me, as always, when he's here, when he's well, not here, then it's not always. Oh, Matt, Matt Lieberman. Whoa. He's here enough that I feel like there shouldn't be like an if-then clause. I guess You're the very be. special guest. Very no, special no, guest. he's always here. <laughs> always here. He's always here. Yeah. But I just felt like in the future, if he's not here, then someone's like, "Well, he's always there." I'm like, "Well, there's only I was one episode left, so let's just do. make sure you're so here just, next week." Just don't right. mess it up, Matt. Are, are you, you know? going to be here? I. I Actually, yes, I will be. Okay, here. good. So, as always, next to me, Matt Lieberman. Hello, hello. <laughs> and in my hands right now is the latest uh, New York Times bestseller. I believe it hit, what, number three? Last I checked, it might even be higher than that. Uh, from our boss, our founder from AfterBuzz, Maria Menunos, who uh, released the Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness about two weeks ago. And again, it's been hot in the charts. Uh, it also, all the proceeds also help out with us over here at AfterBuzz. It definitely goes to everything Maria does. So uh, please take a look. It's a lot of awesome stuff. Celebrity interviews, tons of photos of Maria. Kevin, her a boyfriend, uh, shirtless, as I believe has been mentioned a few times by some people. So if, it's if something you're, into, for everyone. If you're into Kevin shirtless, if you're into Marina in a, in a bikini, I, th I believe there's something in there with her, Lots too. Lots of those. I Lots just saw a picture of yams. Yes, if you, you, like, yams. If you like yams. That's the biggest turn on of all. This is the book for you. <laughs> I thought he said gams, but yeah. Well, there's plenty there's of pictures gams, of gams. There's yams. There's gams. There's yams. So anyway, yeah. in finer bookstores and uh you know again this this also helps us out at afterwards we don't do any ads really or anything at all so uh this definitely helps support us as well so and it's a great book all it's right. a win-win yeah all right let's talk about this week's uh penultimate episode season yes. two, uh, episode nine yes the episode nine season two and the name of this one is things which have never yet been done mm. so. i can pronounce every word of that Yes, I can pronounce every, and it makes sense. It is sense. the simplest one yet. Yeah. Yes, it is the simplest one yet. And uh, again, I mean, it's ramping up. There's lots of good stuff going on here. Uh, we got to see a lot of people, but one person still conspicuously absent. I just want to throw it out there right away. Paul. Yeah. yeah. Paul, who was, absent. yes, who somebody on YouTube even mentioned we didn't really go into detail about Tony's uh, message from uh, from his possible monitor, Sammy, about Paul being a ghost. You know, we never really got too into that. Well, it was also because um, I guess because it was so vague, like everything else about Paul has been this season, mm -hmm. that it's almost it was hard to know. It's hard to know where the Paul aspect of the show is going, and I'll right. be. I'm assuming it's going to play out in the end game next week. Yeah. If it's not going somewhere exciting, I'd be frustrated if yeah. I was the actor. Mm. You know, because like you're <laughs> there, you're not. When you're there, you're not doing much. I'd be frustrated if I was as the viewer if this doesn't go someplace exciting. Yeah, well, so. I, I have to imagine. You know, with with kind of the hints that we got last week and his his absence being protracted, 
that his return will herald, uh, Some, yeah. you know, something big, especially with what happens to the Prolethians this week. Uh, we need a new force to... Uh, well, and even the men in suits that shot, uh, that were shooting at Tony and... Uh, exactly. Yeah. We, need, we need a new uh, a new force to, to contend with. Hmm. But this episode, I thought, did a good job of setting up both the season end game in the, the Sarah Rachel storyline, but also kind of... R- kind of wrapping up some season stories for Allison and Helena, like yeah. you were saying with the Prolethians. Well, let's let's actually get started and, and get a Helena, a Helena storyline in right. there, because uh, I think that one definitely separates itself very nicely from the rest, yeah. so we can we can start off with that one. So uh, Helena is, uh, we see her finally back and being impregnated, or, or, uh, yeah. or, or uh, what do you call it, inseminated, more like inseminated artificially, with uh, an egg, her egg yeah. mixed her in with, with the father. Father, who happens to be? Uh, sorry, you, you were about this, Henrik. No, I was just gonna say, and Catherine Alexander, we got to see right away, so that was thrilling. Oh yeah, that was awesome. Actually, oh, yeah. we got to, this was the episode of Catherine Alexander got to be seen. So and she was the midwife, and she was the midwife. So she definitely got some good roles in there. It's it kind of you know, I I kind of like the fact that she was the midwife. There's something very ironic in that. I think I feel like considering she definitely supports the show, she definitely is someone who's absolutely needed behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. To, for, for the birth of this show. They need someone as strong as someone like that. Ooh. So I, I kind of feel like there's a, definitely a, a, a reason. There's, there's a thematic beauty to it. Yeah. 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 If I'm, you know, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm grasping at straws here. But, no, uh, not at all. Um, yeah. Awesome. But, you know, at first, obviously, she's, uh, she's very much on board with what's going on. And as she says later, you know, she hasn't really been listening to anything that's been <laughs> said. <laughs> <laughs> she just yeah. kind of knows, you, you are putting my babies, babies inside, inside me. <laughs> what is cervix? You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then she eats grapes and goes to sleep. Like, that's kind of where she's at in terms of, like, paying attention. Mm. But this is obviously a sinister sinister place, and she gets hints of it early on when uh, she's brought to, you know, this kind of schoolhouse area, and she kind of bonds with this young girl and then realizes, you know, they say, oh, your, your, you know, kids are going to be with us soon. And she's excited by that until she sees, you know, how poorly they're treated. And kind of the dark side of this cult it reminded life. her of the convent. Yes. Yeah. Well, I felt that 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 scene in the uh, in the nursery, I guess, or uh, I guess that's a nursery, uh, was really interesting because she automatically bonded with that one girl. There was something very Kira esque about that girl too, in her curiosity over Helena, mm-hmm. and they yeah. seemed to bond really, really well. She just wanted to touch Helena's hair. She just wanted yeah. to touch Helena's hair, and then to see uh, to see the teacher, I guess, or, or the caretaker. Well, the, the, the midwife. The midwife. The midwife. Yeah, yeah. yeah I guess. Uh, take her to give her the strap. Yeah, to give her that, say, to, uh, to threaten with the strap. Uh, that was pretty brutal. Right in front of Helena, and Helena, who obviously can be violent on her own, then shows her own brand by by threatening her. That was that was awesome. Yeah, grabbing her by the throat and letting her know mm-hmm. she, she's gonna, you know, what did she, what, what did she say she was gonna? Uh, she would uh, gut, gut her like a fish. Her, gut her like a fish. That's what it was. Yeah. Such gut beautiful her language. Like a fish. And yes. Gracie loved it. She just mm-hmm. ate that right up. And mm-hmm. yeah, Gracie loved that. Well, we saw a real turn with Gracie in this episode. Obviously, by the end, where she defies her father and, and runs up. But like throughout the episode, you were getting a lot of. You were kind of really getting into Gracie's head a little bit more and seeing right. her, the issues she has with her family. And a thing that I loved about uh, Henrik or whatever in this episode. We've seen him all see, yeah, we've seen him kill Tomas, and we've seen him, uh, you know, have his daughter's uh, lips sewn up. But there was always, like, kind of a, a pleasant attitude about him, and there was kind of... And this was the first time in this episode where I thought you saw him act like outwardly evil and scary. Right, there was still something, uh, just because he he's so outwardly pleasant, something yeah. uh, just a little bit ambiguous to what they were doing. Mm. You you know, you knew that they were going to means that were a bit draconian to get their, their what they wanted to do done, but they weren't necessarily bad people. But impregnating your daughter with your kid... That's creepy. ...is really creepy Yeah, that's and super messed creepy. up. Well, I think what's really interesting, too, and I definitely want to bring this, if you look at, at Hendrix and his cult in comparison to, let's say, the clones, mm-hmm. who have very alternative lifestyles, and then you have the Prolethians, who are very, very religious, 
you know, and, and I think they almost take it to a, a crazy degree where we, I think we always kind of picture people who are very religious, super religious fanatics are very against sexual, well, you know, sexual alternative lifestyles and sex in general. And the way Hendrix even approaches it is you can't even have sex. Yeah. You just yeah. artificially inseminate all these people. Uh, and of course, he's doing it in his own perverted way with his own sperm instead of yeah. like, instead of doing that with Mark's sperm at the very least, like, okay, you're going to, you're going to marry Gracie mm -hmm. and she's going to, you know, she's going to be pregnant. So instead of using even his sperm, he's doing his own. Even though at least it wasn't his own daughter's eggs, at least. But still, yeah. Still. 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 It's still it's creepy. creepy. Well, here, here's the, here's Almost the th as creepy as Felix kissing uh, Tony last week. Right. He, here's, <laughs> here's more the other creepy. Thing more far creepy. More yeah, creepy. you know what? More creepy, yeah. Far more creepy. Well, that's another thing I like about the show and what it kind of has to say maybe about religion because mm. it comes like, like I said, Heinrich, even though he's doing these creepy, terrible things, he does it very calmly with a smile of it, and religion kind of approaches him in that way. And then in this episode, you see him lose his cool finally towards the end. You see him yell, you see him get, uh, and it, it just, I, I like, I like what I feel like the show's saying about religion in general, maybe. Based on really? that. Yes. I don't think that religion's they, that extreme, but I, I love I love the extreme that they've shown of this. Sure. I mean, they've taken it to a, a point where I think I like to think that nobody, you know, no no religious sect is really that crazy. But you know, well, you know what? Uh -huh. There are some cults that do stuff like that. I've, yeah. re I've read stories. So and, uh, you know, to know that also that his wife, the reason why she's been absent this whole episode is that she's out finding more brood, mates. brood mares to be impregnated, and that you know, because you you look. And he's been, he and Mark are the only men that have been there the whole time. Mm. And it's been something that hasn't really been addressed, but we finally really, really see in a, in a, in a very pointed fashion this week. And namely that he's been impregnating these women with his seed over and over. And I'm wondering how, like, I, I assume that he's only one generation deep with this and that impregnating Gracie is the start of generation two. I'm hoping that it's not generations upon generations, kind of like what Craster's doing up in, uh, in Game of Thrones. Game of, Game, of Thrones. Yeah. Game of Thrones. Right. Uh, yeah, that would be extra weird, but still, it's just... I just want to throw it. I know everybody's yeah. very creeped out right now, but uh, I don't think it is um, entirely un uncommon to do something like that within families. It is often somebody else's... Um, it is often somebody's oven and somebody else's bun. Um, uh -huh. Family members will... Uh, <laughs> Matt, just like the look on Matt's face right now. Is no, 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 go, go on. Go for it. This is really weird, but go for it. Family members will be surrogates for other family members. I've heard of that happening quite a bit. But not by force. Not by force. No, I agree yeah. with you on that. I agree. Mm. Yeah. But I don't think it's weirder... But, that, but, but I think not, a father, father. not a father doing it to his daughter. No, that's... Who's like 16. Like siblings doing it, I can get. Yeah, yes. So, yeah. But okay. I just think... I don't think it's weirder than the clone kissing last week. Okay. I just don't think it is. Well, poor but that's my opinion. Right. It's, it's up there. I, I'm not... I'm still a little... Somewhere in between. But I think the fact... And if it was not his sperm and he was still having his young daughter impregnated would be equally weird and creepy to me. But I don't think it's weirder than... Than what we went through with Felix and Tony last week. I think it is weirder, but I respect your opinion. <laughs> we all respect each other here, guys. Yes. There's no, not a question There's about so that. No question of respect. <laughs> but here's the thing, right? Uh, Gracie, the whole reason that she went and got Helena back was the threat was if you don't bring Helena back, then mm -hmm. I, you will be the one to carry the babies. But it looks like she was screwed either way because she, she still has to carry the yeah. babies. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. he needed, I guess, all these like Helena super babies that they're going to be. We still haven't even gotten it's to the idea. For creation. Oh, yeah, yeah, what exactly is so? I mean, we know Helena is special, but what exactly do the Perlethians think is so special about her that they need her genes? Why mm -hmm. do they have to be Helena's genes? It's just weird. Weird because it's not even you know you you think that this might be a science experiment to see what kind of babies come out, but at the same time it's like it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't seem like he's really testing them. It just seems like he's building a brood uh, for his own purposes. But I mean, I guess they're all going to be like Kira super kids, and we still don't even know necessarily. We haven't been it's told. Like, there's no, no, there isn't necessarily any proof that they know about Kira's super, super powers. powers. Yeah, super invulnerability. I example. feel like, but they. They know she's special. They wanted right. Kira at the beginning of this, this season. Uh, and I guess that's not 
an end game we're going to get to until next season. Because John Fawcett, he said this week, he said that we are not done with the Prolethians yet. Right. But clearly for this season, well, we seem uh, done. Henrik's Henrik's wife is still out there. Yeah. She's still out there. She's still got some brood mares. Uh, I think uh, you know <laughs> whether or not they've been impregnated. Whether, well, they haven't yet, yeah. you know. And and uh, and Helena stole all the baby. Well, and, yeah. and, material. and Mark and Gracie escaped. Mark yes. and Gracie so. escaped. So we have potentially two Helena babies in play. Uh, maybe more if they have twins. It's hinted at uh, yeah, by Henry. Gracie escaped, but she's still pregnant. She's still pregnant. And then Helena, uh, as of right now, is still pregnant. Really pleased that you know, like Helena calls him out, right? She says, you know, you love her like like a puppy. Like, you love her like a pet. Yeah. You don't actually love her like a person. And he steps up in a big way when he sees her being mistreated. You know, he realizes, like, this is this is screwed up. Mm. Oh, I, d- I don't think she was... I think he was. she was saying, like, it's like puppy love. Like, you're... Well, they're not allowing themselves to really be a real relationship. Well, and when he, he lets said, her out, he's all, he's he like you said, he's kind of stepping up and being a man. Yeah. There yeah. was actually a lot of that in this week's episode. Stepping yeah. up and being a partner. Let's be progressive and say that. Yeah, well, I mean, he is a, but he is a man, so he that's is, why I said. That's why I said. If it had been, okay. if it had been a woman, a, I would have said no. Use but it's a, it's, it's a pet peeve because it enforces it enforces a that it, that it is masculine to be kind of like you know a, a person of action, uh, and that you know there's only one type of masculinity, and b that you know potentially mm. a, you know it's not like you know stepping up and being a woman if he if if he were a woman and she free. You are right, but I, I might want to get into this a little more when we talk about Don. Later. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, right before we talk about Donnie, one other thing I want to bring up with with Mark actually is we got to get a little bit more backstory with Mark too. I don't want to gloss over this because I yeah. think it was important oh, yeah. to uh, to know where Mark came from. And apparently he it sounds like he was a soldier of some Ex-military. sort. Ex military. Ex um, military. Don't know what branch or anything, but he, he claimed that you know he was serving uh, what a mission. I believe I can't remember the exact quote. He was he was uh, he was on a mission on for a mission. country. So if they're if they're in Canada, he was a member of the Canadian. Canadian military, it appears. Yeah. Um, you know, and and we have to think back to he and Paul interacting yes. a couple yeah. episodes ago. It was a very friendly interaction between the two of them. It was almost a little too casual, and that really brings that to light. Mm-hmm. I feel between the two of them. Now, I I don't remember if it was specifically. I don't think that they necessarily came out and said that they knew each other. Mm-hmm. I think that they sized each other up as soldiers. You know, on different sides of this genetics war. What do you think? Do you think that potentially they know each other or that they may be a part of the same ghost group and I, they don't even know? I feel that, it, look, if you have two soldiers from alternate sides of a war right. facing off against each other, chances are they're going to be fighting. <laughs> so the fact that, that Paul was able to saddle up next to Mark at this bar, have a conversation with him and do a negotiation and said, look, you know, you take yours, I'll take mine, and we're fine. The fact that they did that obviously means there's some level of trust. There's some odd. It was a little odd, I think, even back well, then. That scene that was just a mutual respect of two men who That's, had been in the military. Exactly. I, I felt like it was two people who saw in each other. You know, if we have to come to blows, you know, I will have to work for it. Other people will get hurt. Mm. I think that we're both professional enough that we can sort this out cleanly. I thought that he mentioned to Moss in that. Conversation. Did, did I make did? that up? No, that um, that Henrik. Henrik. No. Mark. Mark mentioned it to Henrik in that in the conversation today. I guess I made that up. Okay. No, no. I, I believe I'm, Thomas was mentioned. Was um, I don't remember. I don't remember. About him killing. About him killing Tomas. I thought. No. I'm not sure. He talked about going a wall. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so, but nothing involving Tomas, to my okay. recollection. Okay. Uh, well, I I'm still gonna hold. I think there's enough. There's enough there to possibly create. A relationship between Paul and Mark that we may not be aware. Of. I'm not saying they were best buddies at one point and they well, were howling up, but I'm saying that there, but there was, e- even though they sized each other up, and maybe perhaps it was just two people from the military and they figured, okay, we can talk this out or we can go to blows, and they decided to talk it out. I still feel like there may be more of a connection between those two that we're unaware of. Well, maybe, like you said, they were re- maybe they were recruited by different sides, but for similar reasons mm-hmm. and with a similar purpose. Uh, the other thing from the the Prolethean storyline that I think I love the Frankenstein analogy use, and then Helena turns on that when he's telling the children a uh, Frankenstein story, yes. and then Helena basically turns on them. The monster turns on mm. on them, and it was pretty 
disturbingly satisfying to see her what she did to to Henry. Oh Pinto. yeah, yeah. Stuck oh, yeah. that cow scene oh, right yeah. up his butt. <laughs> that was cringeworthy. Yeah, I was, was cr- yeah. I was pretty cringeworthy for me. He that. had it coming. Oh. He did. He totally did. But yes, that was a very, um, that was a bad way to go. I'm trying to think of a pun, but I'm realizing that <laughs> I, I should. I don't I, want uh, to. And I, I, after I said That's I realized I'd set you up yeah. for a pun. With great power comes great responsibility, Will Link. And, um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I should be responsible and not make uh, not make that pun. Mm, yeah, yes. there you go. Uh, so let's let's talk about men. Let's talk about real men, well, like Donnie. Really quickly, oh, wait, really just quickly. before... Uh, Helena leaves. She sets the barn ablaze. Right. Does she set the whole compound ablaze? What happens to all the children? I was thinking about that, too. I can't imagine she let a bunch of children die. I assume they were able to get out. I assume she started at the barn. She lit the barn of a fire, hoping that they would get out of the other building. Hoping? Helping. I would think she like would let the doors open or something like that. I, yeah. You know, it's just a cut. Uh, uh, it was just a cutaway to the fire, and I, I'm pretty sure that she would have handled that because we cannot see. I can't see Helena killing all those kids. Yeah, it seems completely. I mean, it, it seems completely out of character. It doesn't seem. See. It is out of character. So, she is a murderer, but she loves kids. She's good with kids. She's good with kids, especially that one kid. Like I could see. Okay. Let me put it this way: If she set the whole place on fire and she had that one kid on her back taking her out, right. then I would possibly go, "Oh no, what happened to the rest of the kids? Why'd she take this one?" But the fact that she left alone and left that kid wherever that kid is, I I, I get the feeling yeah. that she warned everyone else. I mean, look, she let Gracie and Mark go, yeah. and Gracie called her a monster several weeks ago. She she apparently bonded enough with Gracie to mm-hmm. let her run, told it, told her and Mark to run off. Yeah. So yeah. I'm sure she gave the same warning to everybody else to run. And then she did what she did to Hendrix, poor Hendrix, and set the place on fire. Uh, Henrik. 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 Yes. Well, yeah. Yeah. But into the Henrik. I read this. Uh, I read into this. The, uh, uh, yeah. the title of an article. I didn't read it because I hadn't seen the episode yet. But one of my favorite ep- uh, article titles ever. I think it was on Gawker or IO9 or something. It's like all of the villains on Orphan Black are baby crazy. And then it was just like a, a gif of Rachel kind of <laughs> laughing watching the uh, the the video later in the in the episode. Yeah. Um, and it's just that's just a wonderful title. And it's true. Mm. All of them are kind of baby crazy. And I know that, you know, these babies have uh, have the special abilities and, and and everything. But Rachel doesn't necessarily want a special ability baby. She just wants a baby. She wants a baby real bad. Yeah. Well, you I mean, we'll if, get into well, her later. Yeah. But. Well, yeah, we'll get into it. We'll get into it a little bit later because I think it sets up a few other things we got to set up to lead to that. So, should we go into Allison? Let's and go Donnie? into Allison yeah. and Donnie. Let's talk about Allison and Donnie. Yeah. So, again, really awesome performances from both Tatiana Ooh, and Christian. Loved Byrne. it. It's uh, so good. Just trying yes. to trying to handle the body and <laughs> work it's together. So good, right? And we talked about it last week in that this was going to be the thing that saved their marriage. We and it totally predicted did. that. We yeah. predicted that they, they didn't have kitchen island sex, but no. they had freezer freezer top sex. Mm-hmm. For, which is which is corpse freezer, freezer. Corpse corpse freezer. freezer doggy style sex. Yes, yes. the most the nasty rare and that was nasty. of them all. I nasty know. ass I sex. Know. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, it was brilliant seeing them both on the same page, working, getting that sledgehammer, mm-hmm. uh, and using that to open up a hole the, in the garage. The jackhammer. The jackhammer. Yeah. It's a sledgehammer. Jackhammer. Thank you. I'm saying things slightly off all day today. It's okay. Uh, it's all right. Anyway, so uh, really brilliant to see that. And then, of course, an appearance by Vic, who, yeah. come on, it's like, I mean, we already know, everyone and their mom already knows that Vic's working with the Angelus. Uh, Allison already knew that. So for Vic to show up, up and be like, Mr. Like, what's in the garage? Uh, just crazy. Was it just me, or did it seem like he might be back on the stuff? He, he sniffed. He did a he, little snort. He did a little snort. Yeah. It didn't seem like he was as clear as he was when he was at the rehab center. Mm-hmm. Because uh, Felix spiking his tea got him back on uh, hard drugs. Yeah. I don't know. No, I don't know. That, but actually, I like that idea. Just uh, at the very least, that it may have caused a little bit of a relapse. Yeah. Yeah. He he spiked it with a uh, barbiturates, which are, are are recreational drugs. So. Yeah. Well, it's possible that could have just set him off a little bit. You know, he didn't seem like his Zen Buddhist way no. when he was there. Maybe he was obviously being pressured by the Angelus to his go eyes in were there. A cloudy. But uh, I could totally I could totally see him and and the way he was just sneaking around. He was just like a big oaf sneaking around, obviously. <laughs> and then of course Donnie, out of nowhere with the gun. 
yeah. coming out, coming out, and holding that gun to uh, to Vic and bringing him in and threatening him. The evolution of Donnie's character, just in these last three episodes, mm. I think has been so phenomenal. He's a whole new man. He mm. really is. And this is getting back to what we were semi arguing about before. His character, even in this episode, is emasculated a lot early on. Mm. Just the way Allison talks to him, and also the moment with the jackhammer where he can't do it and she mm. doesn't. She gives him this cold look yeah. afterwards. And I'm going to use the phrase again. He then he acts like a man and helps his family and stands up and he kind of he kind of rediscovers his manhood. Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's a guy who's always been kind of a, a buffoon and henpecked. Um, and and you're right. In, in the traditional sense, he's always been very emasculated. But it's kind of perverse to me that if we are saying he reclaims his manhood it's, it, in this episode, it's at the uh, at other end of a gun, holding a gun to another man's head and threatening to, threatening to blow his head off. Mm. And then, you know, like... The, the but scene that's with, what it is. This, well, it's not that to me. To me, the scene where he gains his, his manhood... Uh, or where he, you know, he you and self- Allison on that freezer. Let's let's well the, that, but let's say but what let's Lisa call that? it let's call it self actualizing okay. where it becomes his best self yeah. is when he marches into D'Angelis's van and threatens her not with a gun but with a cell phone, okay? Yeah. And tells her, you know, you come near my family again and I will mess you up. Cheese. You know, it, to me, the idea of him becoming a man because he's pointing a gun at Vic's head is is wrong. But that's an oversimplification. I mean, it, he's becoming a man because he's he's now he's in this with Alice and he's standing up to Vic and he's standing up. I mean, he's doing it with I a don't gun. Think but if he had done it even just by grabbing him with his bare hands, it would have been the exact he, same. He, no, thing. no. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay, so it, it's not. It doesn't make him a man that he had a gun to Vic's head. No. I think what made him a man and made him definitely look different in the eyes of Allison is that he had the safety on the gun. It was a bluff. It yeah. was an obvious yeah. bluff. But he showed real power. In enrolling Vic to spill the beans and to cry like a little baby. I mean, this is a guy who's, you know, he's Vic the Dick, you know? He, yeah. he was a badass. Yeah. And here's Donnie getting him, uh, catching him outside, bringing him in with a gun, threatening him, even though, well, like, yeah, Alice is whole... freaking out that he might accidentally uh, pull the trigger again. And all of a sudden, he's like, I, all of a sudden, once Vic's down and uh, on the side, he's like, I had the safety on. I was okay the whole time. I think that showed a man of power and showed right, control. That's why I'm, I'm not reducing it to the moment of the gun. I'm saying it's the whole thing. Oh, yeah. It's well, all well, part of it. No, the no, gun, I, the safety, the camera phone. Well, the I thought we were talking about kitchen, the moment. The I, sex. I thought we were talking about the specific moment. The specific moment. moment that we felt that he really took control he and, and that Allison was like. And became the partner that she deserved. And that Allison wanted to have sex with him really badly. I think yeah, that was the she moment. She the most well, turned on. She had never been. been more attracted to him in, in, yeah. in her life. But not just because of all that, but the capper, you know, drawing the little heart on <laughs> in the cement and basically saying, I own this with you. We are we are partners here. Mm-hmm. I love you, and I'm going to defend you yeah. no matter what. Even if you are a clone, you know, like to me, that was you know him not just claiming his manhood, but him reclaiming his his ownership of his marriage. I would argue that's part of being a man. I would argue that it's part of being human and being true. in a marriage. It's true. I, I would think it's part of being. I, I kind of agree a little bit more with Matt. I don't think. It, I, I don't think. Being a man, you have to label being a man any kind of way. I just because he's a man, it's easy to label him as acting like a man. Fair. If it and was maybe, a woman, uh, I would right. speak to it differently, but feel the exact same way. Maybe I'm being a bit unfair, but it's just. I, no. I mean, we agree yeah. he was emasculated. One hundred percent. So I figure the opposite of being emasculated. All right. I mean, we're getting into semantics here. Yeah, we right. are. We've, we've been, yeah, definitely <laughs> we've semantics. We've gone down a deep rabbit hole. So, what is, what, what is the one, let's get the female perspective. Yeah, what's the one woman here? Female the one woman would love to move on from this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, she doesn't want to talk about so, men, but okay. Um, so I, I just loved everything between Allison and Donnie. And and all of the and Vic, uh, I just thought all of the scenes were so well acted and fun and mm-hmm. funny and endearing and... Um, but I think probably my favorite moment, um, for different reasons, would be in the van when Vic throws up the deuces. Uh-huh. And oh, yeah. Smile. Oh, yeah. It's so ridiculous. <laughs> Vic is just such an idiot. I just. <laughs> well, he knows 
knows he's screwed. <laughs> Does he have to throw? He's like doing that in a mug shot. You yeah, just but you know what? It, but but te- that photo doesn't really hurt Vic as much as it hurts the Angelus. Yeah. Yeah. So really, that's more that's more to put the Angelus on her uh, on her heels. And to be honest, the fact that that uh, Donnie did that helps Vic out too because it's obvious that Vic's being pressured by the Angelus, and she's like saying she's going to clear his record or whatever whatever she has on him. Now Donnie has something on her. So of course I'd be like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. I'll help you out, Donnie. Peace. Here we go. Peace out. It's a great moment. So yeah. this was such a great. I, I don't know how much we're gonna deal in a- Allison's marriage next week. I feel like next week's gonna be a lot of other stuff. It but felt very it was a, final in a way. Yeah, and it was good because that's been her season long arc of trying to save the family, keep her family well, together. Well, not just that. Not just that. She has spent the majority of this season alone. She's someone mm-hmm. who definitely needed support. Uh, for season one, she was already living kind of a loveless, loveless marriage, and she was relying on Sarah. She was relying really on Beth. And then when Beth turned out to be Sarah and Beth was gone, then she knew she had to put her, her you know, all her eggs in, uh, so to speak, all her eggs in Sarah's basket and, and work with her and Cosima. But she's been very isolated. And we saw even Felix, you know, disappeared and finally came back. Now she has a partner, a real partner in her husband. Who's not going to abandon her. Who's not yeah. going to abandon her and who's definitely taking charge. And she, I'm sure... I'm sure the fun part of seeing her perhaps next season is going to see she's still the kind of person she doesn't want to she doesn't want to follow. She's the, she wants to lead the relationship. So see them butting heads from time to time. I'm sure there'll still be a lot of butting heads, uh, oh, but yeah. it's still going to be really really fun to watch those yeah. two. And I'm honestly I'm just I'm delighted to see them on the same page because mm-hmm. they've been through a whole hell of a lot. Yeah. And they've earned the right to have a shot at happiness. Yes. Yes. Because they are two people who love each other, or at least at one point had really loved each other. And it's good to see that love coming yeah. back. Yeah, agreed. Uh, before we get into more of the main storyline, let's talk about iTunes a little bit. So I just want to mention we're on iTunes. If you're watching a stream on YouTube, great. Thank you. We, we read all your comments. There are definitely a lot of comments last week about the kiss. So maybe we'll go into that a little bit later. But uh, please, if you're subscribed to us, uh, please rate us and give us five stars or you know we'd love to we'd love to get that from you it helps us out we were getting some good guests we hopefully might get somebody from the finale uh so but it, it all supports us as well so yes please and uh, there are a lot of other shows on after buzz and please you can subscribe to all of them and rate them as well anyway let's move on let's talk uh let's talk about more or less the the main storyline there's a lot of little parts of it but let's talk about uh the whole thing let's start off actually with delphine and rachel because uh, we saw a little bit of that in the clips from last week that Rachel was going to make Delphine uh, the interim her, director yes, of the project to take over Leaky's job. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and this was part of this wasn't supposed to be a bribe or a ploy, but obviously she also wanted Delphine to approach uh, Sarah because of Cosima's sudden uh, deterioration with her yeah. disease and uh, make up, you know, make an attempt to see if they can get Kira's bone marrow. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I, I mean, we talked a little bit about Delphine possibly, you know, predicting if she was the right person for this job or why Rachel would give her this job. And she pretty much said she had a humanizing effect, plus she knew everything that Leaky knew, which makes perfect sense at the time. And uh, Rachel said that she was lied to by diet as well. So she's definitely she's on the same page or so we may have thought with uh, Sarah. So she definitely yeah. wanted to make peace with Sarah, at least for this. Yes. For the benefit of all, for Cosima in the short term and perhaps the rest of the, clones, the clones in the long term. Yeah. So what do you guys think about that? I wanted to believe. Mm-hmm. I wanted to believe. Like I, I, I knew there was something up, but I didn't know where it was going to go. Uh, but I, I, I wanted to believe that on some level she was doing the right thing, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and that the the kind of inevitable breakdown would come later. But now, you know, knowing everything that plays out, I feel like she was playing, uh, she was playing Delphine from the very beginning, mm. putting yeah. her in this position. You think made, so? I'm not, I'm not I, sure about that. I 100 percent think so because what? it was, it was, uh, it was so that she would definitely a. Have uh, have the power to liaise with Sarah mm. and to bring uh, this bone marrow in, and to be right in the middle there to uh, to find this fake evidence right. that uh, that she had turned one of uh, Mrs. S's birds. I think she definitely wanted. Bird watchers. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think she definitely wanted. Delphine in that position to possibly use her, but I don't think she had this whole plan by design from the from the start. I feel mm. where I feel the moment she decided to make a move was after the scene with um, Ethan. Uh, I was going to say uh, Marion. 
where Rachel has a scene with, with Marion where Marion's talking about Sarah being so special. And she even has a little bit of a dig at Rachel mm, yeah. where she talks about, oh, and you were given everything, and yet she's the the special one. She was out there on her own. And, and yet I, she's so I, curious. I think, yeah, and I think <laughs> at that moment she decided to make some sort of drastic move to mm. get Kira. See, I thought, I, for some reason, I kind of pictured that Ethan, see, when Ethan was showing the sequence to Cosima uh, and, and, and Scott, I guess, I guess actually now that I think about it, Rachel wasn't there, so she wasn't there, but I felt that was also obviously for some reason something big to me. But, yeah, I mean, uh, it is a big moment. It is a big moment. But yeah, I guess to Marion, I definitely felt there was an aha moment, and, and perhaps I, yeah. I mixed it up because uh, it probably was the Marion moment. But yeah, and then she ended up going into her own little cubby hole and watching the tapes again, and definitely seemed to be very, very, you know, much missing that um, childhood, and the maternal instinct seemed to kick in right there. And that might be my favorite Rachel moment of the whole, uh, of the whole character so far from two seasons, uh, because... I love it was where she was the most emotional. It was great to see her with that laugh and the mm. cry and then mm. just get this like very det- I, I don't know. I thought that said more about Rachel than anything we've seen before. Mm-hmm. Mm. Interesting. Okay. So, uh, you know, we, we end up seeing, um, well, we should just get into it, actually, because I think it's such a brilliant thing. I only I don't want to hold it out any longer. So Delphine is getting back to her, uh, to her, her space back because Rachel's been using it. And while she's doing some cleaning, uh, that message pops up with one of the bird watchers uh, saying that he was an asset that was recruited, that was in compromise. And uh, Delphine ends up going to, and I don't, I don't get this 100%, but I guess maybe she wanted to get Sarah alone. So she ends up sending Mrs. S up to get Sarah, who's hanging out with Kira, brings her down to the limo. They have this conversation. And what we yeah. don't realize, I think, right away is while that's happening, that that's con- this is concurrent with, uh, with Rachel going back up dressed exactly like Sarah. Yeah, with the wig, everything. With perfect. the wig. Brilliant. A beautiful, beautiful scene because the whole, even the interaction in the car was Delphine saying, now don't, don't overreact. So us as an audience actually thought that it was Sarah saying, I'm not going to say anything to Mrs. S yet. I want to yeah. check on Kara. Just saying mm-hmm. that something's up and check on Kara. And next thing you know, Felix, who drugged who drugged Vic last week, all of a sudden gets drugged himself. Yeah. So, stabbed in the neck stab- with a hypo. Stabbed in the neck with a hypo. I thought that was brilliant. It, it was. It was such a well-directed sequence. Mm-hmm. Also, there was a moment when she was in, when Rachel was in that room watching all the the, the videos of it, and there was a moment where you see her put on a leather jacket. And I got to admit, there was a second where I thought, mm. oh, is she going to try to be Sarah? But then I totally forgot about it because I was so lost in uh, I was so caught up in that scene, and I watched the scene uh, a second time later, and again, we always talk about Tatiana so brilliant. If you listen to just a couple of words she right. says it's when she's... It's a slight difference yeah, in inflection. It's just a, and you don't notice it because it's so quick. The first time I'm watching on a second time, it's mm-hmm. not that it's obvious, but it's like, oh, yeah, yeah it's not no, because of, because of the urgency. You yeah. know, like knowing that, you know, this guy's been compromised, rushing out of the car. We want her to get to Kira. We don't... We aren't necessarily paying as much attention as we would be otherwise. Um, so who is this doctor that she calls? She calls a doctor... After she watches the tape, as she's putting on the leather jacket, mm-hmm. um, I, I may have missed the significance of it. I don't know if it was the person who supplied the wig, if it was the person who, who uh, perhaps is the caretaker at this place that she took Kira to. Yeah, I wasn't necessarily sure. It seems like sure. someone she has had a relationship with for a long time. Well, don't forget, she's taking her out of the hospital after that bone marrow transplant, and they said that Kira should be in there for a couple of days, so maybe it was somebody just to watch over her well-being. But she also said to Kira that you might even grow to like it here, just as I did, and so uh, and she was raised in a science what? lab, yeah. so, uh, so I'm assuming that they probably have Kira under observation, and maybe by this one doctor. That's that's a good that's possibility, a good too. I like that, too. I like the room that they have Kira in at the end, because to me, it's like, it's what a scientist would think a little girl's bedroom yeah, should it's, look it's like. It's, a it's, not too, quite, it's a little too yeah. perfect. It's almost like Stepford Wife, yeah. like perfect in a way. And then you have this kind of like clean, futury, you know, light wall on the other side. Mm-hmm. That's all like just light ovals. You know, the light ovals yeah. that you have in the future room. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Again, it's another room that might have been uh, from uh, uh, 
Rachel in Cold Bitch Digest when she designed. Yeah, yeah. You know. the perfect temperature. Yeah, <laughs> but again, it's still just a brilliant. I mean, by Tatiana just playing it off perfectly. You know, we we thought that was Sarah till till this this the reveal, and that was really awesome. Mm -hmm. And then to see the real Sarah go up there, barge up, and and take control like that. It was. It, I just. Just brilliant, and we haven't really seen too many. Uh, well, we've seen a couple this season uh, impersonations of yeah. Tatiana playing to you know character playing somebody else. And so this was perfect. This is one that fooled the audience. And again, that's what was was so great about that that one uh, is that you see those scenes, and you kind of always know. You kind of always can tell. By the way, but this one, like you said, because of the urgency, you couldn't you couldn't pick up on it unless you're really listening mm -hmm. to that voice. Now let's not to gloss over. Like we kind of just jumped to the end because it just was really really important. I, I want to talk a little bit more about Kira. Just what a trooper this girl. I mean, I think we all kind of figured Kira. If you ask Kira. Can you do the bone marrow transplant? It might hurt a lot. It's gonna be a big needle. Mm -hmm. She'll do it because yeah. she's so freaking. She's a man. She's she manned up. She manned up. Uh, yeah, I don't think I, I <laughs> could do that. Gonna, Matt's gonna. Matt's gonna. Now in that yeah, case, I would it. not have Everyone said man go up. take a gender <laughs> studies <course. laughs> like, I would not have set man up in that case. I was pushing buttons. Why I, not? I was because oh. she, <laughs> you're trying to have it both ways now, man. No. Well, I'm getting off of this. Topic. Kira is a, <laughs> Kira. Blame Nando. For Kira is an incredibly, <laughs> incredibly brave girl, and she obviously, uh, you know, just is a trooper. Yeah. <laughs> to say anything else, I mean, she's like, I'm scared of needles. I don't like this, but I, if it's going to help Auntie Kasima, yeah, of course, I'll do it. So I thought that was really, again, just another and and. You know, even though it's supposed to take her two or three days to heal, I mean, we saw what happened to her after she got hit by a car. So, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm guessing she'll heal really fast uh, from that Someone anyway. made a point online. Uh, I don't quite remember where. It may have been a tweet that someone sent me. Mm -hmm. uh, how is Kira so very aware of Kasima and what she looks like? Yeah. Considering that she has never interacted with Kasima. She has never called Kasima. Mm. She has never been in the same room with Kasima. But she knows what Kasima looks like. She cares about. Well, her. she has had Skype conversations with Sarah, and it's possible maybe. That was I, my I guess kinda, too. I kind of just assumed that. Right, that she was just kind of like met her via Skype. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I'm just I'm just putting it out there because again we have this sort of preternatural ability to sense things. Well, don't forget, Cal. didn't Cal show the f the drawings that uh, Kira did yeah, to Sarah? Right. So wouldn't Sarah be the first person to go, she's never met Kasima. How does she know Kasima looks like this? Yeah, I feel like that, that would have, if, if that were the case, it would have been an, something that's come up. I, I assumed, like Anna said, that they've probably seen each other I think if they show every Skype. single, okay. yeah, if they show every single nuance, sometimes it just gets to be a little tedious, so we have to make some jumps sometimes. But I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a major jump. I think if it, if it was true, I think there would have been a bigger deal made about it in the show itself. The, the same person tweeted Matt and I at the same time, and um, somebody else tweeted, a third person tweeted, um, you know, not everything can happen on screen. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, maybe they've met off camera. Yeah, well, sure like, and, and like, the fire, like the fire earlier, like, I, I, I don't think that it's in Helena's character to kill, uh, no, no, kill a, a bunch babies. of kids. Yeah, to, to kill the babies. My babies. Uh, my babies. Yeah, my especially my to set fire to them in that way. Those my babies. So, oh, my babies. yeah, we, there's some things that we just have to assume based the on the babies. character, unless unless someone's, like, pointing a bit. And, and that's what's so brilliant about this show, too. Like, we could... Uh, you know, we can analyze certain things, but we're still going to get fooled by by something like that whole Sarah Rachel switch. Yeah. You know, uh, so but we can we can be busy saying I want to see everything. I just realized that on some level, Helena's accent is basically the female Henry Kissinger. <laughs> 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 I will visit my sister uh, with the real politic and my babies. Nice. Ooh, and then I also yeah. want to I also want to bring up uh, I want to bring up Ethan. I mean, we didn't see too much of him, but we definitely got to see him uh, showing. The see he had the key to the sequence in his head, and he mentioned how he doesn't want to give diet everything. But it was a very I, I kind of felt it was a very compassionate uh, scene with Kasima and Scott there. You know yeah. the way he was he was talking to them like fellow kindred souls, like scientists. Yeah. And uh, I know last week we talked. Should we trust Ethan? Ethan should we not? So he, I felt I warmed up to him more. Well, he said something though that was a, a weird giveaway callback that. He said to Kasima, time to start fixing my mistakes, which is what Rachel said to him last last time. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote down the quote somewhere, but he, but what that was the gist of it. Time to, to get to work fixing my mistakes. 
it was just a strange callback to quote Rachel. Um, almost the exact no, yeah, that, same word. Yeah, yeah I mean, there's still something very off about this guy. Uh, and, you know, hopefully we find out next week. But I, I liked that, you know, he, he flat out said, I'm not going to give Dyad anything until I know what their intentions are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with this Dyad guy right there with an ear jack in, who probably immediately told Rachel that this is what was up. <laughs> and I'm wondering how far Rachel would go to get this information out of her dad's head. I think Rachel's a little preoccupied right now with Kara to with really let baby. that affect with her new baby. Yeah. So I think that that might still play out. Uh, this guy, by the way, mm -hmm. just completely watching over Scott's shoulder. Mm -hmm. and it's very similar to the Project Lita photo, if you think about it, with the military guy. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's very, very that similar. Is similar. There is something eerie to that effect, yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure that in the same way that, you know, Ethan ended up escaping Project Lita, that maybe it's setting up a foreshadowing for, for something happening to Dyad with Ethan there. As well, long as he's being watched. <laughs> obviously, I, I mean, maybe I, I'm making the obvious statement here. I, I do like the but. fact that he is very hesitant to give Dyad anything new, anything up, up from the information there, mm -hmm. which is the one thing maybe we can trust him. I, you never know who to trust on the show. Although... This week, if there was anyone who still didn't trust Delphine, that's finally out the window. She's clearly on the side of the clones. Right. But she clearly is. But, you know, but right now, now... she's in danger. She's in danger. Yeah. And also, I don't know if Sarah and Mrs. S really trust her because, you know, she well, could go running up to them and saying, I didn't know. I mean, I tried to warn yeah. you and this happened, but... She was she was played. She yeah, doesn't play. make... I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust her because even if she's on their side, she clearly was gullible. Yeah. Right. And yeah. she's not going to leave Dyad anytime soon because Kasima's there. No, she can't. She can't. So, somebody has to be on the inside anyway. Yeah, somebody has to be on the inside anyway. So she just has to mark that up to, I was played. And uh, it was a ploy to get Sarah away from the baby, away from Kira. And it worked. And I, I feel like a fool. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see what kind of back and forth Rachel and, and Delphine have next week, if any. Yeah. Well, the, we saw in the in the coming attractions, they have at least one scene. Okay. Yeah. And we still are waiting on the four clone scene. We're still waiting for the phone clone scene. Uh, somebody says, mentioned they thought it had to do with Skype, and I'm like, no, it's not. Uh, it's yeah. Skype, it can't be Skype. Because, some, yeah. Someone else said something about mirrors or something. Oh, yeah, someone else said something about mirrors. Uh, I no, don't think. That, that, would be, that doesn't make sense. I agree that it might be a little difficult with mirrors in, a sh in any shot. Usually it's difficult to shoot because you got to make sure you don't see technical equipment, cameras, but I don't think that's part of the phone clone scene. Well, we know Sarah's going into Dyad from the coming attractions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Rachel and Kasima are, are there. Mm -hmm. And maybe, I don't know, Allison shows up. Yeah, potluck, I, potluck at Diane. Well, if it's gonna, <laughs> all right, well, if it's four clones, we got to see where Helena, because uh, Helena's on the run right now. Yeah. yeah. Helena And Helena said, I'm going to go see my sister. Yeah. She said it herself. So, uh, you know, we definitely should be seeing Helena in that four clone shot. Maybe most she likely. comes in like the cavalry. Yeah. And, uh, I feel like, yeah, I feel like for some reason, I don't think Allison's going to be mixing with anybody next week, other than Donnie, maybe. Some well, more, yeah. some more <laughs> sex. Well, okay, fair. But, <laughs> uh, you know... I don't think that it would be Orphan Black if we left anyone on a happy note at the end of a season. Mm. And I feel like having she and Donnie mend fences and finally come back together, no pun intended, um, <laughs> uh, you know, in this way, means that we're going to get something bad happening next week. Because I, we have to remember, she did sign away her rights at the end of last season. Mm. That hasn't been touched on at all. All season long. Yeah. And if we're seeing this kind of like dark laboratory esque room that Sarah winds up in, who's to say that they don't nab up the rest of the clones and uh, and you know start experimenting? Or that Allison just comes in for whatever she's agreed to come because she has agreed to come in for mm -hmm. tests mm -hmm. uh, every once in a while. So maybe that's how they all get into Dyad at the same time. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. that could be a thing. Yeah, that makes sense. That could be a thing. Definitely could be possible. <laughs> I, I <laughs> love the way the show handles anything medical, the way they film it, the way, like, even with Kira getting the needle and stuff, Oof. it's just also, it reminds me of, like, The Exorcist, the scene The Exorcist when they're running the tests on Does her. Does anyone feel like they took Reagan. a lot of marrow? 
He took a lot of marrow. I, I'm not She's got a, tiny bones. I'm man. not familiar with that, but it's it, it that needle that whole thing. That was another Oof. cringeworthy effect to me. Oof. I'm not a fan of needles yeah, it either. It seemed like, like they kept handing over, like to you know, yeah. I feel like they drained it that whole bone dry. It wasn't as bad as what happened to Hendrick, but uh, that made me really cringe. But uh, but the Kira thing did. Yeah, and the Hendrick bit. thing kind of put a smile on my face. So. Yeah, that didn't bother me as much as yeah. the marrow. Oh, he's I, terrible because he violated Helena. Oh, I'm not saying he violated his daughter. I'm not saying that. It wasn't, it wasn't worth it for him to get it. I'm just saying actually seeing that kind of made me cringe. I mean, you know, that was all it was. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> you haven't heard anyone ramming I'm a, not a an injector. We have, I don't want to see it. as much as, Even if I don't like the person, I really don't want to see them getting rammed with an injection uh, in that area. <laughs> this, okay? has been, this has been a very testy episode. Uh, of the uh, very uh, that was very, No, that, was, that wasn't supposed oh, okay. to be. Uh, that uh, wasn't supposed <laughs> to be. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it's contentious, but I said With testy. great power comes Com great power. I don't know the power I have. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's great. It's yeah. great power. <laughs> well, that was a lot of fun. Do we have, uh, do we have any news and gossip, Mr. Will? No. I just no. have one thing that I, I, I would like to say yes, um, as a... <laughs> as a woman? As a woman. <laughs> as um, as, as no. a fan? As a what? Prediction? Before we go into, into <laughs> predictions... <laughs> um, uh, this is this comes from iTunes and it's from um, Fiction Boy and it was comes from June thirteenth and uh, he said loved it but got spoiled on something and um, it's something that actually came from um, our season one recap and I, I just I just wanted to what's that say well we we pointed out there is going to be a new clone coming and that was in Entertainment Weekly and it was out there but. Not everybody reads those articles. And okay. But the clone so, we're referring to was Jennifer. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay, so, but that's it. So I just wanted to acknowledge that, that, yeah, and we didn't put a spoiler alert on that or anything, and so... So we, um, we apologize so we that apologize the information was out at the time it was at the of time. our post. Yeah. And, but, but we should have been more sensitive to that and put a spoiler alert. And put a spoiler alert in front yeah. of it? so that's all. Okay, fair enough. I, I feel like it wasn't just Entertainment Weekly that mentioned it, but I, I could totally understand that. I used that as one example. Yes, got it. So. <laughs> got it. Okay. Yeah, it was there was two people, then Tim Weekly and us. Well, we if it was if it was something about a death, I definitely wouldn't mention that. But uh, you know, I'm I'm hoping to see more clones. I'm hoping we see more clones next season. You know, so mm. uh, and who knows what we would see? You know, considering Tony was such a interesting choice, uh, who knows where they'll go next? If they'll even try and heighten that. So anyway, let's move on to predictions. And now your After Buzz TV predictions. Okay, well, man up. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I love you, Matt. We love you too. We talked about how you know. I guess Paul's got to come in to play next week somehow. Mm -hmm. And we were just talking about maybe Helena comes in with the cavalry as the cavalry to try to save the day. But I think the person who's going to come through somehow and work their way into this storyline, maybe help Sarah get out of Dyad, is a uh, Cal. I think Cal. Mm. Is, have I stolen your prediction? That's my prediction. Oh, Damn it. I apologize. Because he's <laughs> clearly some sort of corporate terrorist. He mm. clearly has these things going on. He's looking into Dyad. So he's probably going to see that they have her in some way. Mm. Well, my prediction is actually that he's going to save Kira because when they parted company last, he said, remember, do you remember that number we practiced? Mm. Do you still remember uh, it? So, right. so yes. I think It might not necessarily be like a cell phone or something. It might be his whole operation, his whole network. He might be operating the ghosts, man. That's what I'm saying. <gasps> you think so? He might be a ghost. He, he might, might be, be a ghost. ghost. Oh, that's a great prediction. Think about it. Mm. Oh boy! So, but I think I think you're right. I think the whole because that whole moment with Kira wouldn't have happened if it wasn't going to come into play now. Yeah. So. Mm. Well, uh, you know, I don't have anything as good as you guys. Damn it! Uh, I feel like I, I feel that definitely, like we said, that uh, we can't see a clone with a happy ending, probably for the season finale. So even though Allison's in a really good place, uh, I, I want to say that I don't think the disease, I don't think Kasima's infliction is going to get fixed. It's going to extend to next season, and I'm going to predict that Allison's going to start showing signs of it at the end of this season. Hmm. I think that's a good prediction. That's good, yeah. And I'm just going to throw out there again, I'm going to say it right now, 
time jump between season two and season three. I think that makes sense because right now Helena is still pregnant. We th- we didn't and say we didn't think she'd pregnant. last. Yeah, yeah, we didn't say it was going to last, but I think I think a time jump would be in order because mm-hmm. it'd be interesting. Yeah, because you can't. I can't imagine watching a whole season right. of Helena running around pregnant. pregnant. And also, Skylar Wexler is getting older, and it makes sense if they've you know waited a whole other year to shoot. Mm. You know, having a time jump. You know, just as she's going to get older, she's going to look a little different. Makes sense to me. Time jumps are all the rage right now. So. Yeah. No, that's mm-hmm. good. I like that. Uh, Will, where oh. can we... F- oh. oh, wait, wait. Wait, 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 what? Before we go, really quickly, Green Mason, uh, no children were harmed during Helena's escape from the Perlethians. She also saved the goats. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Oh, where did you get, get that it, one girl. from? The, you just um, called them up? No, no, no. Jamie Willis Rose, thank you very much, tweeted this to me awesome. during the show. So thank you. Excellent. Awesome. Uh, it's good to know people are, uh, are watching, are watching live. live. Are yeah, watching thank live. Thank you. Totally. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Will, where can we find you? Uh, at the Real Will Link on Twitter, and you can listen to my podcast, Will Sean Podcast, on the Westcast Network. Anna? Uh, you follow me at Koppel from here, K-O-P-P-E-L-F-O-R-M-A-Y-O-R. Mr. Lieberman? You can find me on Twitter at Matt Lieberman. That's M-A-T-T-L-I-E-B-E-R-M-A-N. You can also find all my videos for SourceFed and SourceFed Nerd on YouTube. And you can find me on Twitter at Nandovel, N-A-N-D-O-V-E-L. You can find us all on other various AfterBuzz shows. We have more than 50 shows usually in production. Uh, catch us on iTunes. Subscribe. Rate. We, we got, got Defiance. Defiance starting on Thursday, starting season on, two. Yes, we do. Uh, the whole first season season is available to stream on Amazon Prime yes. for free. For Prime and I'm doing 24 later tonight. And you did Salem today, right? You I did do Salem, Salem today. So there we go. Bunch of other shows. Uh, too many to mention. But anyway, thank you so much and tune in next week for the season finale of Orphan Black! From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.